talking about what you're talking about real honest entertaining live dbl starts right now three two so enthusiastic welcome to dbl everyone it is friday we made it to the end of the week february 5th yay hey. that's okay we got one clap i'm tori here with brandon and alan just a quick note we're all wearing red today for heart disease awareness day uh, and I want everyone to know it's 80% 80, 80 preventable with good diet change. So. Can I let everybody know our executive producer sh red shamed me? Yeah, I know, because he said us, you're not wearing real us, red. Us, because he said this is Brandon, a red you're a little either. bit more red than Thank me. You. I'm a little burgundy today. You're a Bordeaux. A little brown burgundy. 
week. All right, well, we've got a very special show for you today. You don't want to miss my interview with, yes, the infamous Heidi Fleiss. You might remember her as the Hollywood Madam back in the 90s, but what has she been up to since prison? We'll find out when we catch up with this notorious newsmaker later in the show. But we're all super excited for the big game, aren't we? Yes, yeah. I am. I'm okay. This <laughs> weekend, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Super Bowl 55. But there are some concerns that it may become a super spreader event. So one recent survey suggests 28% of people who plan to watch will either host or attend a party. And remember, it's these small parties that cause the problem. Speaking of COVID, the Chiefs really dodged a bullet after a team barber tested positive for the virus while cutting players' hair. Two players were placed on the reserve list, but their MVP quarterback, Mahomes. My man. Patrick Mahomes, I know who he is, <laughs> was reportedly in line to get his hair cut when it happened. Wow. Can you imagine that? And get this, the largest bet for the game was placed by this unassuming gentleman. He owns a large furniture store chain and goes by the name Mattress Mac. Mattress Mac put down $3.46 million for the mm. Buccaneers to cover the 3.5 spread. Mm, I will admit, bet. I don't know what that last sentence But you know what? You don't meant. need it. I took a statistics course and I nailed that on live TV. Statistics. Yeah, First go. time there because I'm a professional. Do you know what, the, what would you think the best bet would be? Like the best odds? Like, the like. The coin flip. 50 50. 50 50. Every time. It doesn't matter if you get heads 100 straight times, 101, it could be heads or tails. Wait a minute. We can't be talking Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, we can't, oh, we can't be talking. Oh, bro, got the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. I can't oh. see you. I didn't fan Just your face. Fan look. your face. Oh, I love it. This is my camera. There, Let me see people. it. Let's see it. Let's see it. And Guys, this is uh, this is wrong, wrong camera. camera. Good job <laughs> there. Wrong camera. Where is he? Right here. Right this here. is Brandon Maybe London's Super Bowl this. ring. Is this camera <laughs> one? Wow, this is going well. Okay, so he was on the Dolphins, the Giants. Giants. The Giants. Giant. Look Giants, at that Giants. beautiful ring. Oh, I love it. Now, how often do you break that out? Well, when he goes to the bars, usually when I get a manicure, <laughs> I just looked at my fingernails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, usually when I go to events, like some sort of super event, I don't, you, you, you don't, people always ask me, oh, if I went to a club or a bar, I'd wear it out all the time. Ha try having like four or five drinks and then like imagine yeah. you lost your Super Bowl oh ring some, somewhere or whatever. But it, this week, to me, you know, it, it's, more, it's bigger than the game. It's always been bigger than the game to me because it, you realize, I, I think about what the players have sacrificed, not only them, but their, their families as well, the coaches. You know, football is my livelihood because of who my father is, my brother, my sister. So I just think about what it means to, like, actually run out there with your teammates on onto the field. And I was on the practice roster, so I didn't play in the actual game. But before, I got a chance to hang out with Alicia Young Keys. Brandon. I met Alicia Keys. Those are Whoa. some of the rookies. That was practice uh, leading up to the week. Because, you know, you're practicing for two weeks. Wow, there's Alicia. That was Alicia. We should wow. be married right now. But Swiss Beats <laughs> came in and swooped her up. And that was me on the sideline. And I'm just, I'm all over the Giants DVD. And I took these pictures with my little, uh, I had like a little boggle, like, camera phone thing right. back in the day not as good quality as these iPhones but I just just seen Michael Strahan Eli Manning and just the ultimate catch that David Tyree had at that time you just realize what it means and then hanging out with Giants fans and you you, you talk about what it meant to them their family oh my grandfather was on his deathbed and he got a chance to watch see the Giants win another Super Bowl unbelievable this game I understand it's a super spreader please people be safe be cautious but at the same time out sports the great uh Uniter. It really is. The great uniter. The great really uniter. Right and I will be there for the nachos. Yes. <laughs> yeah. oh, three bean. Woo. Three bean casserole. Yeah, three that's true. Casserole. But I do think the weekend's going to be great, so I'm also looking forward to the halftime show. Well, no matter what happens on Sunday, Tom Brady, go University of Michigan, go blue. Oh. Huh? Will already be setting records just by taking the field. He will be the oldest player ever to play in the Super Bowl at 43 years old. Wow. Check out Brady on Jimmy Kimmel Live. He had to read some mean tweets take a look hope everyone has a great Monday except for Tom Brady <laughs> you Tom Brady <laughs> you. Tom Brady you suck <laughs> you ugly you suck you throw like a fat lady with a flabby arm and a little girl butt face <laughs> hashtag Tom Brady hashtag suck <laughs> you suck
<laughs> you suck. What do you guys think about people reading mean tweets? And what do you think of Tom Brady? You either love Tom Brady, like right now you're looking at me and you're like, yes, I love him. Or as Rob, my camera guy says, absolutely cannot stand Rob him. My executive producer, him. Chris, also a thumbs down. I went to Michigan, so I will lo always love Tom Brady. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I think anybody, maybe there's a Tom Brady in your world of yeah. cross-stitch. Yep. But is there like somebody that's considered the best cross-stitcher? Suzanne Taylor from there's Iron nobody Rappers that's Michigan. better everybody's exactly the same well I mean they're skilled stitchers sure okay why are you okay. enunciating <laughs> like that but who's I, the goat stitcher I was trying to bring you into the conversation okay I'm, I'm, in, I'm in I'm in sports the great <laughs> united there it is yeah but what do you think about Brady do you like him yay or nay you haven't I said. just love to see greatness I yeah. know so that you sounds super say, corny okay but you're just never going to see this again in your life it's like when people hate on LeBron I'm like he's 36 and he's amazing like, we've never seen people like this. And I don't think, Brandon, you could really talk to this. I think the culture of athletes have changed where it's like you're expected to be boozing it up. Like, you hear about the old teams in the 80s that would party and literally go to practice, and that was considered a good thing. Yep. But their careers were definitely shortened. Now it's and like you, vegans Right, everywhere. Tom has his own regimen. He, he, and he eats right. And you see it. TB12, his own nutritional program, workout program. And that's and What's that's TB12? Tell TB12, us. Tom Brady 12. It's I his see. brand. He's got a really cool logo as well. And just it just goes to show, like, and not even what you, you're putting in your body as an athlete, what you're feeding your mind now yeah. the hashtag more than an athlete is is such a big deal now and we get a chance to watch the Tom Brady's and who, who else in sports is kind of old that we're looking at and we're like you know what we've only got let's say maybe two strong more years with Tom but we're it gives Rob it gives our, our camera guy Chris it gives you some executive to, producer our Chris? executive our executive producer Chris <laughs> But it gives you something. It, it's it's like to you get to root. You. Yeah, you, yeah, you root against them. You hate them, you know. But at the same time, he throws that game-winning touchdown pass. And it's You're crazy. Like, ah. By the way, my favorite was I, watch. I heard Sharon, our technical director, go boo <laughs> when I said Tom Brady just <laughs> very quietly. Got feelings in the Everyone world. is like feeling. That's right. All right. Well, we've got some really good viral videos to share this Friday because we all need a laugh. Up first, an Amazon delivery driver has a very bad day when his van. Oh my God, gets away from him. You see him chase after Oh my wow. goodness. Before it spins into a house. Oh no. I'm so sorry, sir. And check out the aftermath. The house has some actually pretty bad damage. Yeah, it got hit by an Amazon truck. <laughs> <laughs> and the van also hit another truck. Wow, you couldn't hit the Kia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damage control. That's why Jeff Bezos stepped down as CEO. My God. Come on. It couldn't have been like a worse. Well, a good Amazon story is uh, well, it actually is UPS, but yesterday, you know, we leave uh, Starbucks and uh, snacks out, oh, right. and uh, they drop something off. And I, I noticed because in our big window, I was like, somebody's right in front of them, but they were going through the box. <laughs> and so my girl goes out to get the to get the mail or whatever was dropped off, and you just hear from down the street, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, good luck. It Everybody means just takes one. Wow. I'm like, take three bags. It means a lot. It literally, literally yes. means a lot to them. Well, finally, check out what happened. When a defendant hits on a judge, I watched this this morning. This is my, I think this is so Brandon London. He hits on a judge during his bond hearing. Take a look. The chutzpah. How you doing? How you doing? All right. I'm good, sir. How are you? Judge, you are so gorgeous, the judge. I just have to tell you, you're gorgeous. Thank, thank you, Mr. I, I Lewis. Love, All right, Mr. It. All right, Mr. Lewis, flattery will get you everywhere, but maybe not here. He did it all wrong. <laughs> what would you have done, Brandon? He did it all wrong. Oh, hey, Judge, how you doing? Oh, how, how are you doing? Oh, you know, I'm good. I'm good. I'd be doing a lot better if you show your brother some leniency. <laughs> oh, and then you know? have the have the face. Yeah, See, I thought of it as don't be the defendant. Don't be arrested. Tinder, don't tinder be. guy number one. Don't be the criminal. Don't be arrested. Uh -huh. But I thought, you know what? Good for him. Chutzpah, right? A lot of chutzpah. Do you know what that is? Yiddish for you got nerve. And it didn't go kid. terribly. It didn't work. No, but it, no. I mean, some judges would have been like, okay, now I'm going to double it. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Well, flattery will get you everywhere with this one. We love you, Tori. Thank you. Coming up on DBL, I'm talking, yes I am, to the notorious 90s newsmaker Hollywood Me? Madam. It's not you, it's a woman, oh. and it's Heidi Fleiss. From life post-scandal to remember that infamous little black book, we are not afraid to go there. And let's check in with our co-workers putting the show together from home. It's Friday, y'all. We miss you and appreciate your hard work from home during the pandemic. We'll be right back. This is a smile.
Welcome back to DBL. Sex, fame, and fortune. The Heidi Fly scandal had it all. The Hollywood madam was a 90s tabloid sensation known for running an upscale prostitution ring in LA. Her arrest made headlines, rivaled only that in that decade by OJ and Bill Clinton. But unlike them, not many know what Heidi's up to now. Well, here's a hint. It has to do with bird rescue, which you will hear clearly in the interview. Earlier, Heidi took me back to her reign on top in part one of Notorious Newsmakers. Joining me is the one, the only, Heidi Fleiss. Thank you so much, Heidi, for taking the time to talk to us today. It's hard to believe it's been two decades since your reign as the Hollywood madam. Your life looks very different now, and I'm really excited for our viewers to hear all about your new passion, which we can see over your shoulder. But I want to go Wayne's World back in time. Do 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 do. I want you to take me back. So the early 90s, you're on top of the world, you're making $300,000 a week, and you're rubbing elbows with the most powerful people. Talk to me and paint a picture. Was life as glamorous as it looked? Well, I remember one time I came up, opened my bedroom, and Prince was, oh, came out of my bedroom, Prince was dancing in my living room, okay? So I would turn around my back and my back, I was like, oh my God, Prince is dancing in my living room. Oh my God. Was it insane? Oh, it was so much. It was a lot of fun. It was. It a lot. was. And look at this. Isn't some Jeffrey Epstein weirdo stuff? These are adults. These are very wealthy men. These are girls who move specifically to LA to meet these rich guys, and they're adults making adult decisions. I was the match, the grinder, the tinder. I was all of it. It's true. And a and a travel agency and a limo service too. <laughs> wow, you are you, you you absolutely were totally consensual, which makes it so different. But people were obsessed and still are with your little black book. And to this day, you famously refuse to name your clients, no matter how much money is thrown at you. Why was it easy for you to kind of be the Hollywood madam, but you won't break your silence? I think that's so fascinating. Tell me about your loyalty there. It's just look it. Everybody knew, we all knew what we were doing. And just because, I, you know, I, that day, I knew that guy, the undercover cop that arrested me, it was my fault. I was high and just, I you know, clouded my judgment. I sunk my own ship. Why did, should I destroy everyone else? I had a great relationship with the people. I, I, dealt, I dealt with the wealthiest people in the world. For Christmas, I would get gifts like, um, one client paid me as a gift ten thousand dollars and five hundred dollar bills oh my things god. like heidi oh my god <laughs> all right so let me pick us back up on our timeline it's 1993 your life is really starting to change you uh, have an arrest and the trials are very like oj levels big right there was the famous charlie sheen testimony then the prison sentence in 96 and i want our audience to know this was not like a lori lachlan prison right this was like a real 20 month in prison serious time how do you remember that time take me back there what was that like it was thir 36 months and i, I did 
camp that where Felicity Huffman was. I started there, but I ended up uh, across the street at this hardcore women's penitentiary where women will die there. We're not done with Heidi Fleiss just yet. Later on, Heidi takes us behind bars and shares shocking stories from her time in and out of prison. You do not want to miss part two of Notorious Newsmakers. There were times when, I mean, I've never been so terrified. I thought I was going to have to kill some girl on a weight pile and spend the rest of my life there. It, it was really hard. Attention, an important message. to DVL. You just saw my interview with Heidi Fleiss, the infamous Hollywood madam from the 90s. Well, in part two, Heidi shares how prison shaped her passion for rescuing birds. And a heads up, you will hear those birds in the interview. Notorious Newsmakers continues right now. audience to know this was not like a Lori Loughlin prison, right? This was like a real 20 month in prison, serious time. How do you remember that time? Take me back. What was that like? It was, um, of course, looking back, it was easy. It was no problem. It was fun. It's over. <laughs> but it, it, it was not. I mean, there, there were times when, I mean, I've never been so terrified. I thought I was going to have to kill some girl on a weight pile and spend the rest of my life there. It, it was really hard. Did you use your smarts to sort of figure out where you went in prison to kind of figure out how to survive? Well, I didn't look around and think I could be pimping out my roommates. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We'll lead with that. That's perfect. Actually, prison was probably the most important thing that happened to me because I viewed the world differently when I got out and that's how I wound up with all these birds. <laughs> I want to go to the birds because you might not have noticed the sounds everyone but there are some birds going on and I want to know about this. You have a very interesting passion for macaws and parrots. Tell me about your passion and why you relate to the cages that you said and I wanted you to explain that. I think that is so fascinating. Talk to me. When I got out of prison I saw a bird in a cage and it was different. Well, I know why I went to prison. The bird shouldn't be in a cage. And people don't realize what the pain that they endure when they're, because they're born in a cage and they will die in that cage. There's no other option for them. And they're not, nothing. Wow. I don't want to do this with my life. I don't like them. <laughs> but somebody has to address this. If they were, um, enduring and cuddly like i mean everyone loves a puppy or a kid if they had any of those likable qualities this wouldn't have carried on 
like this, but they're just not likable, so. Do you have an organization we can like list? Madam Macaw Foundation. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks. much, Heidi. So good uh, talking to you. Oh, anytime. Thanks for helping the birds. Of course. Bye, love. Bye, Ray. Bye. We'll be right back. Drive sponsored by Car Shield. So, first cruises were typically carefree. I gotta be honest, I loved a good cruise. Okay, but now expect the opposite with mandatory pre travel testing and a lot of disinfecting on board. Second, high tech touchless options will expand this year, such as any kind of payment options with your phone or facial scanning in the airports. And lastly, with emphasis on social distancing, more people are expected to spend time outdoors enjoying activities like camping or hiking.
or Al's favorite activities. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when it comes to your travel for peace of mind, get an auto protection plan with CarShield. CarShield protects their members from the high cost of auto repairs. Call 1-800-505-9619 for a free what was, quote. What was that sponsored by CarShield or Carnival Cruises? Because you had yeah, me she really, thrown off at the I beginning. just like a good cruise. You know, okay. it, it made me think about how, when they were talking about the, the, the touchless options. When I went to Australia and when I went to Japan, there's, you don't talk to anybody. Yeah. You walk in, they do, there's a face scan. You walk up, you put your passport down. It scans oh, you. Yeah. You walk right in. The door's open, and you're just in Australia. You I didn't think talk to anybody. It's, it's amazing what they strange. had. In Taiwan, I believe it's Taiwan, um, and I can check on that. They have disinfecting booths that each person goes in at the airport already, oh, that's which we, we will be seeing. But I want to get, get this. for the house. I know. Uh, Megan O'Brien wrote us in, Brandon, and said, if I was a judge and Brandon had to be in my courtroom for a bail hearing, I would definitely release his fine to and go home. And you'd be disbarred. <laughs> what do you mean? What's up with some of these parking tickets I got? <laughs> yeah, parking. Let's work some of that magic. Oh, man. Well, a quick goodbye right now to all of our friends and coworkers who we really watched from home today. It's Friday, guys. Go have a good day. One day when it's safe, we'll be back together again in the studio. DBL's new every day. We'll see you Monday. Same time, same they place. Go me. football. They really love me.